at, at some point, will stand-ups be able to make more money on the internet than they made on TV? They and already are. They already are. Yeah, they already are. So it's like, it's pretty wild. The lack of caring they have for these conventions. Now, some of the comics have made so much money, they've re-imprisoned themselves. And that's why they usually come out against a comic who crossed the line because they're afraid of their own money kind of going away instead of just defending their friends. When, when Harvey Weinstein came out, when it came out about Harvey Weinstein, um, they went to Tarantino and it's like, well, you've worked with him. You need a way, you need to make your statement. And he said something along the lines of, hey guys, I've known this guy for 25 to 30 years. He was at my wedding. I was at his or vice versa, whatever. Um, this has been a friend for a long time. You need to give me some time to think about this. And it seemed reasonable enough and they kind of went away. And I don't even know if he ever said anything. What's, what's saying anything going to do anyway? Exactly. You just They need more of that, but they're all scared of losing their position, so they sell out their friends. LA Comics more than New York. So comics. the more money they make, the more cowardly they become. We all wanted to do another our own thing, and then this money in prison, they had these jobs. I mean, I, I make fun of Rogan once in a while, where I was like, I remember when he was still in LA, and I was like, hey, I'm coming to town. I'm going to go on a hike. And he goes, oh, I can't. I got to interview some guy. And I was like, ah, I just cancel. He goes, nah, he's coming from Australia. I got to fucking do it. And I was like, oh, for your job? <laughs> <laughs> He'd say, shut up, all right. Oh, you wouldn't do it for millions of dollars? I'm like, no, I would, but don't ignore. You Are you job. worried about getting too successful where you can't take four months off and go to Myanmar? I, I, no, no. The problem becomes when you have a, like this guy and that guy where like you guys rely on me for money. Yeah. So now it's a separate thing. And that's when I didn't realize. That's what Comedy Central did to me. Um, you got employees. Well, they were like, well, there's all these, like, you have all these staff members. You have all these people going to shoot your show. We'll kick you out. They'll be out of work. They're not going to pay their rent or you can comply. And you're like, oh, fuck. How horrible are they? They're just really horrible. Like they are, right? I get that, that feeling. They're done now. They're off, which is sad because it was a good platform for comedians. I don't take any happiness in their demise. So that's actually my last question is about, is about the new platform for, for comedians. Like how central is Rogan to all this, to, to this ecosystem? I mean, he is the best, the amount of support he has. I mean, th there's times where he goes, so some big guy, some Oliver Stone wants me to have a podcast, but I can't, I have this open micer on today or tomorrow. So I'm already booked. I want to promote this open micer. Whereas everybody else would go, well, the name Oliver Stone will get more hits than this open micer. So I can't, he's just like, I'm the, I'm the name. I'm Joe Rogan. So I want to put this guy on or that guy on. And this guy's funny. I want to push him to a big platform instead of like, what's going to help me book my show. It's like interesting. It'll help me. He just, the casual talking about the outlawness of stand up has helped all of us, whether or not you've been on his show or not, he's made stand up more popular, you know? So now we, we can all just, I mean, it's, it's succeeding on a le It's a crazy level. So what, like, what's the effect on a stand-up's career of going on Rogan? Uh, well, one time is not as big as, as it once was because there's, now there's thousands of episodes. Um, but guys like Theo Vaughn launched off like a good early appearance. Tim Dillon launched off that. Dave Smith, you know, really be became well-known. I know that. all three good guys. Yeah, yeah. And you do well on that. Joey D, but like it was consistent ones, you know? Um, it's not like, it's kind of like the Tonight Show with Johnny Carson was a long time ago. Yeah. Where it's like, it, they say like, you go on there, you're a star. And everyone you talk to from back then, like, no, no, no. Your eighth time on there, you're a star. But that whole week, people recognize you. But unlike Carson, I mean, Rogan makes the call himself. He doesn't have yep. like yeah, scouts no. in the mm -hmm. clubs at night. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he's like, wow, this lady was, and, and, and there's someone's female open micer. We were all getting high in the back. And then you have to walk past the original, the, the room. And you kind of like go in there, especially if you're high or drunk. It's great watching some high level unknown comic. You just, it's, it's great. It's laughs. You know, it's free laughs. Um, yeah, it's like you're passing by a live stand up comedy show on your way out of work. It's, it's the best. And he's in there laughing. He goes, you're great. He was always really great. Carson, Carlin was like that. He'd sit in the back. He knew who he was. And if you did well, I'd be like, hey, that was a really good set. He knew not to just, keep that to himself. He knew what George Carlin saying good set would mean. Did you know him? I met him once. Never said it to me. Because I never <laughs> had a good set in front like of him. He didn't like your shit at all. Never had he? a good set in front of him. But uh, but if he was there and he saw you, he tipped me 20 bucks to get him a deli sandwich. 
And I was like, no, the comedy store is playing for us. I know it's for you. And I desperately needed it. <laughs> I mean, okay. I was poor. And Rogan was always passing money around. Really? Oh, yeah. Yeah, he kept me in business for a long time. Rogan did? I opened for him for five, six years on the road. Yeah, we're good friends. We're good friends. But like, so I mean, I can't, it can't pay him back. I just try to be, I just try to pass it. How many dates do you do a year? I try to limit it to 24 weeks a year. And the weeks can either be Friday. For weeks? It can either be just Friday, Saturday, or like for the Edinburgh Festival, it's it's an entire month. It's four streets. How do you not get addicted to heroin doing that? That's so much time on the road. <sighs> you, you get to be a boozer for sure. Yeah. Yeah. Heroin is always like, one time I had a thought like, I mean, I want to try it. But I was like, okay, I'm going to do it away from home so I can't find a dealer that I can. And then you realize you can just find a dealer. If you're you in New York City, you, yeah, find probably, you probably pull that off. Yeah. yeah. So I just haven't gotten into it. But how do you keep your life from capsizing? Sometimes it gets bad. And, it's, and you're like, oh, I got to take that back a little. Pot also, sometimes like, nah, I messed up a show a little bit. Not completely. It went from an A to like an A minus. Be like, eh, cool it. Being high on stage. Being high, being drunk. You're like, let's get drunk afterwards. They asked Earthquake once, like, do you drink on stage? I love this interview. And he goes, stand up comedy is one of the few uh, jobs that uh, enable you the right to imbibe while you were at work. And I like to avail myself of that right. And they go, does it ever make you worse? He goes, almost every time. <laughs> 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 but uh, yeah, you just got to keep track of it and not let it get to your, 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 your employee. So it's up to you. Yeah, but there's a, there's a disconnection that happens. You justify. There's a lot of sober comics. Are couldn't there really? Handle, couldn't handle it. Joe List. I met Joe List. Great comic. I met him when I moved to New York. There was like a separation between New York and L.A. Um, and I was like, Hey, everybody here in New York talks about you. Like, like kind of reveres you, but I've never heard of you coming from LA. Like what's, he goes, you want to know why I'm not as big as my name? Goes, yeah. He goes booze, but I've been sober for six months <laughs> and now 12 years and he's crushing it now, but he had to, you know, he had to do that for himself. Other guy, I mean, Rogan gets high all the time. <laughs> he can handle it. So yeah. But a lot like, of, I mean, there's a reason that touring musicians, yeah, you know, it's just tour. It's the touring. There was a DJ who quit. Who quit DJing? A high level. I forget who it was. And they were like, he was like, "Well, I'm I'm doing too much drugs. So I can't do it. So I got to stop DJing." And people go, well, "Just don't do drugs while you DJ." And he goes, "Hey, you just don't know the world. Yeah. <laughs> you have to." Um. Yeah, I don't know. You try to self, but yeah, Rogan, he just rules for it. And it's, and it's a way of like, he's like, pay your openers well. He was paying me $150 a set to MC. The standard rate was 50. He was paying 150 and then paying Joey Diaz would go with us also. He's paying him also 150 and the rate for the middle was 100. And then one day he called me and Joey and he goes, hey, I'm sorry, I'm giving you guys a raise. But I'm like, no one's offering us that much. Definitely not more. He goes, no, you guys are headliners. You should make headliner money. I'm giving you 250 a set. So we'd come home with like as much money as I would make pretty much on my own headlining that I never got any work, by the way, but like it, it would have been the same and also never touched my wallet and went out to the finest restaurants. You know, it was, it was great. That's amazing. Yeah. Why so, do you think he does it? Oh, I don't know. He's a positive guy. So for a while he just brought Joey Diaz with him and then, um, and Joey was pretty coked up back then. And sometimes he just would not show up. Um, and he could bring a local, but he, he had to be supportive to the scene. He got to help guys that are struggling and he'd bring just Joey and then Joey would, he, he'd get to the airport and he's like, Joey, where are you? No one answer his phone. And then he'd land in the new city. He's like, where are you? He goes, ah, something came up. I missed my flight. And it's like, you, I was at the airport. He missed your flight. He just Coke excuses, you know? Yeah. And so he's just like, he's unreliable. He might not show up. It became too much. But instead of saying, you can't come anymore, <laughs> he goes, I'll just bring a second opener. So if you don't come, I've still got somebody. It's it's nuts to have an employee go, I just don't show up a lot. Like, I guess I'll hire two employees then. <laughs> instead of just firing the guy. He was like, he's too funny. He's got to be supported. It's our responsibility. That's remarkable. Yeah. So I try to do that with like young comics. It's like, you know, it doesn't, one time I was- Wait, so when, when your opener gets- 
too high to to show up at the airport you're okay with no that? i've never had a guy like that people are too whatever but like no i'm like i'll pay for your meals if we're out like at a diner after spots it's like ah, i got it don't worry about it because that's what Rogan, i remember one of those he was like brand new to la he took us all out for like the standard hotel um late night food and he paid like three times in a row i'm brand new to LA. this isn't normal for someone you get around but not consistently get rounds that's weird and we're at carney's where it, uh, it was a chili dog place and i was like let me get this one i was broke i couldn't afford the standard hotel but the carney's like it's three dollars each you know and um he goes no no it's okay i'm like dude dude please let me get it there's also like a a, a man sort of, of like course. hierarchy yeah, thing you can't yeah, keep yeah. paying for me i don't know you like that um and i insisted and he goes okay thank you appreciate that and then later we're walking back to the conference where he goes hey just so you know like it's not a power position when i pay for you it's just like that standard meal for me is is about a quarter to you. It's about worth a one five nickels. Yeah, that's why I pay for it. It doesn't. It's it's meaningless. It's not for power. I thank you for buying me carnies, but like it, it, that's all. I have more money, so take some. You know, like if I could just I could just go get coffee at your spot. I don't have to ask. So when Rogan got attacked when they tried to claim he was a racist of all things, um, oh yeah, it well, didn't comments, seem what it had like no effect. It had no effect. Also, comics supported him. I think this is what you got to do when there's there's this like meteor of hatred coming at anybody. You get it plenty. Uh, other people have gotten to play. It's just media, it's solid ball. And for a meteor to break up, it needs to start breaking up. And you get the image where it's like a piece falls off, a piece falls off in the atmosphere, a piece falls off, a piece falls off. So what support does from other people in your industry, either broadcasting or comedy, is it shoots a fucking hole through that meteor, a little hole. And that starts to break it up a lot faster. If you have a few commerce who go, guys, you just don't understand comedy. That's just a joke. He doesn't mean that. You're out of your mind. It creates doubt in the story. Yes, that's right. And then it breaks up really fast. Thanks for watching our YouTube channel. We hope you'll subscribe to it. And by the way, you can hit the little bell on there and get notifications every time we produce a video. We hope you'll do that also.